Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Flames erupting in a west side home. The cause of the blaze is still under investigation, but we now know $75,000 in damages. More details just ahead. Plus, President Donald Trump's defense team getting ready to dismantle charges that the president abused his power. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 60 degrees to start your Sunday morning. That's about 15 degrees higher than what we started with yesterday. Our Sarah Spivey joins us with your full forecast. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock Sunday. January 26th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, not too cold this morning. Or not as no, bad as not yesterday morning. Not <laughs> nearly as bad as yesterday. Did you make it outside yesterday? Yeah, but it was nice. It went up being a nice day. I would have asked for a little more sunshine, but the temperatures oh, were cool. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we were able to stay in the 60s in the afternoon. And you're right, Max. It was completely cloudy in the afternoon. We actually saw some fog and drizzle work its way into uh, San Antonio in the evening hours. And even early this morning, we still had some areas of fog, but things are starting to improve out there. Take a look outside. You can see the horizon there. Even just coming into work a couple of hours ago, there was quite a bit of fog out there, but visibility has improved to 10 miles around San Antonio. We've got slightly drier air moving in place, and that's why we're starting to see that fog uh, dissipate. But there are still some areas that are dealing with some patchy fog this morning, especially southeast of San Antonio. You look down toward Pleasanton, visibility is at about two and a half miles. You look out toward Gonzales, it's about down to two miles, even up toward Austin visibility down to three miles. So because there's still that risk for patchy, dense fog around San Antonio, there is a dense fog advisory in place for all these counties in gray you see here until nine. If you do run across some areas of patchy fog, make sure to use those low lights rather than those high beams on your car because the high beams actually tend to scatter all the particles and make it more difficult for you to see. So we could still have some clouds and some patchy fog and drizzle by 10, but then we'll quickly see clearing skies it's actually going to be a very warm day. Expect a high temperature close to 80 degrees with a northeast breeze at about five miles per hour. And again, in the afternoon, total sunshine. We'll have a beautiful day tomorrow as well, but I do want to talk about rain chances, especially on Tuesday morning coming up in just a few. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. We begin with four suspects in a deadly home invasion still at large this morning. San Antonio police say they entered a house on the west side with four other people inside. Our Jesse Degollado is live at Public Safety Headquarters with more details on this. Jesse, what can you tell us? Well, we're now being told that the victim who died later at Bamsey was a man possibly in his mid-30s. So here's what we know so far. San Antonio police say that it was about 1130 last night when four men entered the home on Hidalgo Lane on the city's west side to allegedly rob those four people inside that house. One victim, again possibly in his mid-30s, was shot in the leg, then rushed to Bamsey, only to die later. They say he bled to death after a bullet hit a major artery. And that's all we know for now, other than police are questioning or have been questioning the people in the house to find out if they knew the suspects or what may have led up to the home invasion. But at this hour, San Antonio police are still looking for those four suspects in last night's home invasion. We're live outside Public Safety Headquarters, Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. Also new this morning, a woman is in critical condition after police tell us a pickup truck crashed into a pole just south of downtown. Police on the scene say it happened just after midnight at the intersection of Gunther Street and Eagle Land Drive. SAPD saying that the crash was so intense that the woman, a passenger in the pickup, went through the windshield. That woman taken to BAM seat in critical condition. Police say the driver of the pickup was under the influence. He is now facing intoxication assault charges. Those could be increased to intoxication manslaughter charges if the passenger dies. Arson investigators will be looking into what caused a fire at a home on the city's west side. Now, San Antonio fire crews worked for a couple of hours last night to put out hot spots at the home on the corner of McNeil and Willow Brook. They say the fire started at the back of the home, but no one was home at the time. Officials say that house is in a total loss, about $75,000 worth of damage. And another busy week scheduled for Capitol Hill. President Donald Trump's legal team continuing to tell their side of the story in the president's impeachment trial. And as CNN's Whitney Wilde reports, the president's defense team is looking to make the case for a swift trial and acquittal. You cannot simply decide this case in a vacuum. A new chapter of impeachment is underway as the Senate shifts its attention to President Donald Trump's defense. President Trump. The Republicans' turn comes after House Democrats spent three days urging senators to remove the president. We don't believe that they have come anywhere close to meeting their burden. 
for what they're asking you to do. In fact, we believe that when you hear the facts, you will find that the president did absolutely nothing wrong. The president's legal team intends to dismantle charges the president abused his power and obstructed Congress. Accusations stemming from a 2019 phone call in which the president allegedly asked the president of Ukraine to launch investigations into a political rival. Democrats say Trump's request was a condition of release of military funding to Ukraine. The Democrats' allegation that the president engaged in a quid pro quo is unfounded and contrary to the facts. Trump's legal team has 24 hours over several days to make their case, though the president's counsel says they'll prove his innocence with time to spare. We will finish efficiently and quickly so that we can all go have an election. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild. And the U.S. consulate in the Chinese city of Wuhan will evacuate its personnel and some private citizens aboard a charter flight Tuesday. Now, this is in the wake of health concerns over the coronavirus. Today, notice from the embassy in Beijing said there would be limited capacity to transport U.S. citizens on the flight that will proceed directly to San Francisco. Meanwhile, China's president has ordered all patients with the Wuhan coronavirus be treated in centralized quarantine. The disease has sickened at nearly 2,000 people and killed 56, almost all in Wuhan. Now, three people in the U.S. have been diagnosed with that illness. And we now know a U.S. soldier is dead after a crash in Syria. The Defense Department identifying the man as Army Specialist Antonio Moore of Wilmington, North Carolina. The government says that Moore died in a rollover crash. A press release says that he was conducting route clearing operations. Activists say violence continues to break out in northeast Syria despite a ceasefire in that region. And some scary moments for an older couple hiking in the canyon in California. They had to be hoisted to safety by helicopter after falling off the trail. They were found clinging to some tree roots alongside the cliff. During the rescue, one of the hikers let go, and the woman fell briefly before a paramedic was able to grab and hold on to her. They were both lifted up to a safer location on that trail. The hikers both refused medical treatment and appeared to only have minor scrapes. That is insane. It's scary. Wow. All right, time now, 6.07, 60 degrees out. And still ahead, the Spurs will try to get back in the win column today when they host the Toronto Raptors. I love the enthusiasm in yes, your voice yep. when you say win. Yeah, it's going to happen. Go. 3 o'clock this afternoon, right? Yes. <laughs> Plus, having too many streaming services can start costing you a lot of money. What streaming services do you have? Mm, Hulu, Netflix. Disney. All of them. Disney. Oh, you got Disney? Yeah. All right, we're going to talk about it in a second. <laughs> Plus, we have how you can save money, even get some services for free. I know, it's starting to add up. We got rid of traditional cable. Are you a cord cutter? Too, yeah, because it was too expensive. And then it started off, you know, okay, but now the money's adding up again, so we're going to have to take another look at Understandable. it. Understandable. I'm a cord cutter, but KSAT app is free. That's right. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. 6-11 this Sunday morning. And your daughter had a basketball game yesterday. Yes, she did. How'd she do? She did great. That's awesome. Uh, I'm super proud of her. It was That's really good. exciting to see that she was excited about it. And she scored uh, two baskets. That's awesome. Oh. How old is she? <laughs> she is six. So, oh my gosh, at six years old, basketball Rooney. game, you are just... Certified bucket getter. Yeah. I've okay. seen it. She, yeah, she did She did really well. I mean, her team didn't win, but it wasn't by that much. And actually, I saw a lot of improvement in the whole team. That's good. From last week, their first game. And when you're watching six-year-olds play basketball, the only thing you're really hoping <laughs> for is no injuries That's and that they true. try really hard. Yes, so. and, and I was glad to see that. That's well, it, was, it was inside, though, right? Yeah, that was inside, so, you know, we were okay. <laughs> well, today looks like a perfect day to go outside, practice. I know your husband, Luis, big basketball player. Yeah, so he might play basketball Yeah, and people are going to be sweating this afternoon, guys. <laughs> because we're going to see a high temperature close to 80 degrees this afternoon. Oh, in really? It's January, right? Yeah, it's January. Okay, just making sure. It's January. Late January. Yeah, it's late okay. January. Just making sure. Uh -huh. But it is going to be warm. Now, this morning has been kind of interesting because we've had some areas of patchy drizzle and fog, especially if you were up late last night, you definitely noticed the areas of patchy drizzle and fog. But taking a look outside right now, you can actually start to see some stars. Skies are starting to clear a bit, and that's the first sign that we're really going to warm up this afternoon because as soon as the sun comes up, those skies are really going to start to clear and it's going to get warm pretty quickly. But we are still dealing with some areas of patchy fog, especially
especially southeast of San Antonio. We've seen visibility improve drastically around San Antonio. This morning visibility was as low as a quarter of a mile at times, and you can see that we've got perfect 10 visibility, but down in Pleasanton, Still a little bit of fog, visibility down to two and a half miles there. Let's take a look at temperatures. It's much warmer as we start today than yesterday. Still on the cool side, but still a lot warmer. It's 60 in San Antonio, 58 in Bulverde, 57 in Canyon Lake, 55 in Tarpley, and 51 in Las Maples. A wider view here. It's near 60 degrees out toward Del Rio. It's 61 in Catula and 59 in Laredo. Again, yesterday we were starting off in the low to mid 40s, so we've seen a temperature improve um, and about 15 degrees from this time yesterday. Warmer air holds water better and that's why we've had some of those areas of a dense fog. And just in case we do see some areas of patchy fog around the city center. There is a dense fog advisory for all these counties in gray until nine o'clock. If you do run across some patchy dense fog, just make sure to take it slow and use those low beams on your car rather than the high beams. But look how quickly we clear. By lunchtime, we'll have complete sunshine and temperatures will warm up really quickly. We'll be close to 80 degrees in downtown San Antonio. Elsewhere, you can expect a high temperature in the upper 70s, even up in the hill country where it's typically a little bit cooler, out toward Bernie near 77 for the high, Seguin near 73. So just breaking it down for you, we'll spend the first part of the day here in the 60s, still having some cloud cover during the morning hours, but then clearing skies in the late morning hours will already be at 70 by lunchtime. If you're wanting to have Sunday brunch, should be good to have that outdoors. 78 for the afternoon high in San Antonio, sunny and warm, and then we'll cool down pretty quickly under clear skies tonight. Temperatures falling off uh, to the low 50s by midnight. Northeast wind at five miles per hour. Take a look around the state of Texas. Quite a bit of rain out toward the Mississippi River Valley, but this is our next system in the Pacific Northwest at the moment. It'll be sunny by Monday, so we'll still have another day of total sunshine, but that front will arrive on Tuesday morning, bringing with it a broken line of scattered showers. Tuesday morning for the morning commute and slightly before looking pretty good for a chance for rain. So keep that in mind. You may need to give yourself some extra time on Tuesday morning for the commute, but hey, we'll take the rain. We absolutely need the rain. Right now it's about a 40% chance in coverage early Tuesday morning. Then we'll clear out pretty quickly. It'll get cooler. Notice that temperatures are going to fall into the 60s for highs. And then on Thursday, we have a good chance for some scattered rain. Overcast skies and highs struggling to get out of the 50s. So today's going to be warm, but the rest of the week is actually looking like it'll be on the cool side, especially after Tuesday morning's front. Still pretty mild considering. Definitely mild. We have not had a freeze in quite some time, but as you know, <laughs> they're all smiles. As you know, this time of year, all it takes is one big Arctic front to right. make us feel like it's winter again. So, I mean, it'll probably happen. Uh, probably. Thanks, We've still got yeah. a couple more months of winter. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 616, 60 degrees out. In between Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and Netflix, do you feel like you're subscribed to too many streaming services? Hmm, maybe. Still ahead. <laughs> we have some guidelines to keep in mind to help save you money. And next, after a tough loss to the Suns, the first one here at home for the Spurs, well, Silver and Black back at it again this afternoon. We're going to have a full preview of their game hosting Toronto Raptors. Good morning and happy Sunday. We are rapidly approaching Super Bowl 54. The teams are set. We're just a week away. So just in case you didn't know, we have the San Francisco 49ers who, fun fact, last season only had four wins. And the Kansas City Chiefs led by superstar Patrick Mahomes. So let's start with the NFC champs. The 49ers, they are hard at work in Santa Clara, California. They featured the NFL's number two overall defense, the number one defense against the pass. Niners cornerback Richard Sherman, former Super Bowl champ with the Seahawks, says that the Niners defense feels good and they are staying confident against Patrick Mahomes because, well, it's a necessity. I think confidence in this league, just in general, is one of the most important things. Um, that's what allows great players to be great, and that's, that's what kind of 
hampers and, and, and keeps other players from being great or reaching their potential is because you either get confidence early or you lose it. And once you lose it, it's hard to find again. But once you has it, have it, it's hard to take from you. Um, but, you know, I think we believe in each, in each other. We believe in the scheme. We believe in what we've done all year. And, and we plan on going out there and putting a good, you know, good product on tape and seeing how it goes. Super Bowl 54 is a week from today, 5.30 p.m. at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida. As for the prep, both teams are set to get on their respective planes today. Fly to Miami, the site of the big game, and that flight set for later today. And it's never a bad time to talk NBA. Spurs looking to get back on track, looking to get back in the win column tonight after that tough loss to the Phoenix Suns. The Suns beating the Spurs Friday night 103-99. to It ended an 11-game skid in the Alamo City. The Spurs looked good early. They crumbled in the second quarter, and, well, it cost them big time. The Spurs now getting ready for the Toronto Raptors. They are tied with Miami for the second best record in the Eastern Conference. Spurs host the Raptors this afternoon at 3 p.m. Fun fact, it is the only regular season trip to San Antonio for the Raptors this year. I thought you were going to say fun fact, Kawhi is no longer there. Also a fun fact, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard is no longer a member of the Raptors organization. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just in case you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know. Just in case you forgot. Yeah. 622, 60 degrees out. And still ahead, it seems like every few months there's a new streaming service. Up next, how you can make sure you get the shows you want without overspending. Good morning and welcome back. You cut the cord. No more regular cable? Yeah. It, my, it was my husband's decision. He was just done. Makes sense. Yeah, he was like, no It's affordable. More. So what <laughs> streaming services do you use? So we have uh, Hulu, Netflix. Oh, and then, but we're also, we also have uh, Amazon. I forget about mm. that one. Do so you have every one? You also have Disney. Yes. Disney Plus. All right. Well, so that's up. <laughs> from Netflix to Hulu to YouTube TV, that's mm -hmm. another one. Okay. Streaming video services, they're booming nowadays, especially for cord cutters. But even people who still have cable, they at least have one of these, like Netflix. Oh, that's true, yeah. And how do you know which service provides uh, shows that you want and how much you have to pay to get it? So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz cuts through some of the streaming confusion. If you're having a hard time cutting the cord, you're not alone. For most consumers, I think it's a little overwhelming as they get into this, and it's not as easy as it used to be. It's confusing because the world of streaming is rapidly changing. Besides older favorites like Netflix, you now have new services like Disney+. Plus. Some services are designed to replicate what you used to get with cable. But there are other services that are focused on original content. And it used to be that cutting the cord would save you a lot of money. That's not always the case. Not only do you have to consider the cost of various services' subscription prices, there's the cost and speed of your internet. So you have to consider the cost of having a, a decent broadband connection because now you're streaming. If you have a family where four or five people are all streaming at one time, you need to have a pretty robust broadband connection for that to really work. So what's a confused consumer to do? Well, sit down with your family and make a list of the shows you can't live without. Then research to see which services offer them at the lowest price. Websites like realgood.com can help. This one's handy. It's called suppose.tv. You just put in all the channels you have to have. It shows you the streaming services that will work plus the price. And remember, you can watch your local channels for free with the one-time cost of an antenna. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Or, like KSAT TV, you just download the app and it is free. Yeah, just in case. Shameless yeah. plug, but it's a fantastic <laughs> app. 627, 60 degrees out. And just ahead more on why a local councilman wants pre-K for SA. It's all part of our new leading SA segment coming up later on JMSA. And we're also going to have more on a renewed push for federal policies that would pay workers during their time off. Good morning and happy Sunday, 631. And it is the 26th? Yeah, well, are the 26th? You, <laughs> you're still trying it's to... It's the 26th. I was like, believe, 631. I was like, it felt so much later. You can't believe it's January. I can't believe it's still this degrees. early. We've been up this early. But yes, can't believe it's January, 60 degrees. The question is, are we going to see more beautiful conditions today? Guys, what would you say if I told you the high temperature was going to be near 80 degrees today? 
80 degrees. I would be more confused than I just I, was. <laughs> I thought it was going to be in the 70s, but I guess, yeah, pretty much, well, almost. 78, yeah. that's pretty much that's near, pretty high, though. right near 80 degrees, mm -hmm. I know. And, you know, temperatures right now are actually on the warmer side as well. We usually see a high temperature this time of year right near about 63 degrees. Take a look, it's 60 already in San Antonio. It's 52 up in Kerrville, 50 at Bernie Stage Airfield, and 58 in Hondo. Now, we also have some areas of patchy fog, especially southeast of San Antonio, but the skies are already clearing this morning and we'll be able to warm up really nicely. 78 for the high temperature today with a breeze from the northeast at about five miles per hour. It's going to be warm. It's going to be one of one, one of those days where you're going to want to go outside. However, I would caution you to not wash your car yet because we do have a chance for rain right around the corner. So I'll have a look at that forecast in just a few minutes and when you can expect rain here in the Alamo City. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man is dead. Four suspects are on the loose after a home invasion ends with shots fired. Jesse DeGoyado is live at Public Safety Headquarters downtown. So, Jesse, what are police saying? Well, in addition to looking for those four suspects in that home invasion, San Antonio police also have been questioning the four people, four other people who were in the house at the time. It was about 1130 last night when police say the suspects entered the house in the 100 block of Hidalgo, um, Hidalgo Lane on the city's west side. Police say they'd come to allegedly rob the people who were there. One of those in the house, a man possibly in his mid-30s, was shot in the leg. We're told he later bled to death after the bullet had struck a major artery. Now, police want to know if the people in the house may have known the suspects, who again are still at large this morning. We're live outside Public Safety Headquarters, Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jesse. Police are investigating after a woman was found dead next to a vehicle that crashed in front of a tire shop overnight. Now, police say it happened in the 3600 block of Culebra Drive around 3.30 in the morning. Police tell us that when they got there, they found the driver of the vehicle passed out and highly intoxicated. Now, they say it appears due to road rash that the woman may have been dragged, but there is no evidence she was hit. Investigators are still trying to piece together more details on this crash. Days after her death, her family now comes together to remember their loved one. 19-year-old Anna Martinez was shot and killed at her apartment Wednesday just off East South Cross. Her family now working to pay for her funeral. A barbecue fundraiser held off East Mitchell Street yesterday. Family and friends telling us they're devastated over Martinez's sudden death. San Antonio police able to make an arrest. They put into custody 22-year-old Jose Maria Galindo Thursday morning. Galindo now accused of fatally shooting Martinez at her southeast side apartment. Her uncle says they really just hope that justice will be served. For lower income, it sets the, the tone of how we break that, that generational poverty. Because a lot of the kids, if you're in a setting where you're not getting fed mentally, emotionally, and, and spiritually, you start to digress. You don't really see where you're going. In a community like District 2, it's tangible. That was just part of my conversation with District 2 Councilwoman Jada Andrews Sullivan. The Councilwoman wants to make sure pre-K for SA stays in place because it helps a lot of people in her district. She also says she wants to change the stigma around crime and poverty in the area, as well as highlight the great aspects of the district, including the Hay Street Bridge and Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Now be sure to tune in later this morning at 8 a.m. to hear more about her vision for District 2. And violent clashes broke out in central Beirut this weekend as dozens of protesters attempted to force their way into the Lebanese Prime Minister's office. Security forces sprayed water cannons and fired tear gas to disperse demonstrators after they broke a part of a barbed wire fence that leads to the government building. Now, protesters were also throwing some rocks at security forces. The latest unrest comes amid a wave of protests against the political elite in Lebanon as the country faces a financial crisis. And at the border in California, Customs and Border Protection agents found 222 pounds of liquid meth. That drug bust worth an estimated $266,000. A patrol dog a leader alerted the agents to a truck's gas tank. They remo removed the tank and found an unusual liquid substance that actually began to crystallize. A 36-year-old man who is a U.S. citizen was then arrested. 
Agents have seized more than 40,000 pounds of meth, all just since October. And the U.S. Census Bureau is recruiting, recruiting to fill thousands of temporary positions, but the Better Business Bureau says to beware of scams. Scammers are posting about open census jobs on the web and social media, then asking to be paid fees for applications or training. Now, the Better Business Bureau saying that's a dead giveaway, that that's a scam. Federal agencies never charge application fees. The Census Bureau will also not charge you for training or ask you to buy any equipment you may need. If you are interested in getting legitimate work with the U.S. Census Bureau, you can go to their website. Time now, 637, 60 degrees out. And if you want to have a baby, how long can you stay off of the job? Coming up more on a renewed push for a federal policies that would pay workers during their time off. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 60 degrees to start your Sunday, and it is going to be a beauty out there today. We are joined by our own Sarah Spivey, who has a full forecast just ahead. Good morning, 640 this Sunday morning. If you're a working woman, how important is it to get extended time off? A recent survey shows 70% of women who left the workforce did so because they needed flexibility, like time to care for a new baby, an adopted child, or even a sick family member. Congress has attempted in the past to pass federal paid leave, and President Donald Trump just announced he will soon sign into law 12 weeks of paid leave for federal employees. But as our Erica Hernandez reports, the issue remains for other workers. Ashley McLeay is packing up and moving out. She and her husband need more room for their expanding family. When little Michael arrives, Ashley will take two weeks of vacation offered by her employer followed by six weeks of unpaid leave under the Family Leave and Medical Act. In fact, one in four women go back to work within two weeks because they cannot afford to lose the pay or their job. Ashley admits it could get tight in those weeks without their paycheck. I'm currently paying student loans and we have a mortgage. Inez Stepman is with the Independent Women's Forum. They surveyed 2,000 Americans and found 73% wanted the government to take action on a federal paid leave plan, but one that doesn't hit taxpayers hard in the wallet. Americans are, are concerned that this kind of program be fair to everyone. A proposed earned leave policy would allow workers to tap into their social security benefits early while they are on leave and then extend the age at which they would be eligible for their benefits at retirement. The proposal uses the Social Security disability formulas already in place and is dependent on a person's current income. For somebody who's making about $30,000, this is somewhere between $900 and $1,000 a month. Parents could receive up to $1,800 a month and the program would be capped at $5,000. That helps to pay the mortgage, it helps to pay the grocery bills, it helps to keep the electric on. Stemman says the Earn Leave proposal has broad bipartisan support and politicians have shown willingness to address the issue. The U.S. is the only industrialized country that does not federally mandate paid parental leave. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, back here at home, 60 degrees to start the Sunday morning. Or Saturday yeah. started with 45 degrees. Right. A lot yeah, warmer this morning. Yeah, I could feel the difference. Actually, yesterday I, I grabbed a heavier jacket. Yeah. And this morning I was like, hey, I don't even need a jacket. No, 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 you don't as you step out the door. Maybe a light sweater because oh, yeah. uh, it is 60 degrees outside. Which, for now. For now. <laughs> by the afternoon, we'll be close to 80 degrees, guys. And we're wow. already starting to see clearing skies. You know, overnight we had some areas of fog and drizzle, but right before the sun rises here, you can see the first light of the day. And already you can see patches of clear sky up there. So we are going to be seeing beautiful sunshine today. It's 60 and overcast at the airport at the moment. Visibility is actually great right now around San Antonio. About two hours ago, we had visibility down to less than a mile in some places around San Antonio. Not the case anymore, and you can actually start to see that skies are clearing somewhat from north to south. Most of the rain is out near the Houston and Galveston area at the moment where they're dealing with some thunderstorms. But here in San Antonio, like I said, Skies are starting to clear from north to south, and we'll have a beautiful Sunday on deck. As far as visibility goes, there are still some areas where we are having patchy fog. Notice up near Bernie Stage Airfield, right on the Kindle and Bear County line, visibility is down to a half a mile. So in some places, there still could be that risk for 
dense fog where visibility would be as low as a quarter of a mile. So because of that, we do have a dense fog advisory for all these counties in gray until nine o'clock this morning. But I do believe that will expire because we're really going to be looking at a beautiful day. Clearing skies currently at the moment. Again, starting off about 15 degrees warmer than how we did yesterday. It's 60 in Gonzales, uh, 60 in Pleasanton, 59 in LaGrange, 64 in Victoria, 61 in Catula, 57 in Uvalde, 58 in Del Rio, and 52 in Rock Springs. And as we take a look at the high res future cast, those clouds are just going to melt away. And we'll be looking at tons of sunshine this afternoon. Everywhere you look, it's going to be sunny and it is going to get warm. Already by noon, we'll be at 70 degrees, uh, 78 for the high. This time of year, we see a high temperature right around 63, 64 degrees. So we're going to be about nearly 15 degrees above that, above average, feeling close to 80 degrees this afternoon with the northeast breeze at five miles per hour. It's going to be a beautiful day to do any outdoor activities. You just definitely won't need that jacket. But it's not going to stay warm for long. Take a look at how these high temperatures trend downward into the week. We are going to see a front that will move through on Tuesday and gradually colder air will work its way in. Even by Thursday, we'll only be able to see a high temperature in the 50s. Part of that is because we will have some areas of scattered rain around on Thursday, but our first chance for rain is actually going to be Tuesday morning. Right now that system is over the Pacific Northwest and that cold front is going to move closer. First will be sunny tomorrow in the 70s tomorrow after some patchy fog once again in the morning, but then that front is expected to move through San Antonio about Tuesday morning through the lunch hour. It's right then that we'll probably see a broken line of showers right along the time of the morning commute. So we're going to have to watch out for that. The roads could be a little wet for that morning commute. Then that front will move through and we'll have clear skies on Tuesday and on Wednesday. But again, Thursday, when we're only going to see highs in the 50s, should be overcast. We should have areas of scattered light rain. Until then, enjoy the sunshine this afternoon, tomorrow afternoon. If you're hoping for rain, Tuesday morning's looking okay for a couple splash and dash showers. And then by Wednesday, we'll have more sunshine. Back to cloud cover Thursday. That cloud cover will linger on Friday. We'll probably have some lingering showers as well on Friday. And then look at that Saturday forecast. Beautiful. Beautiful yeah. sunshine and highs in the 60s. Yes, please. Next Saturday. Yeah, next Saturday. Case at Corral. Great weather Case for that. Case at Corral. Great weather for that. Thank you. Car wash, thumbs up or down. I would wait yeah. because mm. Tuesday morning we're going to have that chance for rain. And then again on Thursday. So I would wait until next weekend, honestly. Getting so bad. I'm sorry, Max. So hey, bad. at least are you keeping the inside of your car clean? Yeah. Yes. There you go. Kinda. Do that. Depends <laughs> on who you ask. 647, 58 degrees out. Well, if you are looking for a little bit older dog who is, boy, full of energy and life and vim and vigor and everything else, you're gonna meet this girl coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. That dog is too big for that lap. Too big. Taking a live look out of the roads right now. 35 at Brooklyn, 35 at Cesar Chavez. Everything seems to be going smoothly this morning, but if anything pops up, we will let you know about it right here on air and ksat.com. We'll be right back. Wendy's here from the Animal Defense League, and if you're looking for a dog that's going to give you a run for your money as far as <laughs> energy and just love and life, this one. And she's a love too. I mean, she's very affectionate. This is Miss Isabel. She's eight years old, if you can believe it. And obviously in great health. Um, she is potty trained. She loves to ride in the car. And you know, uh, Mike, we have our special Senior for Seniors program where uh, any dog or cat over the age of seven um, can be adopted by someone over the age of 60 with all of our fees waived. So, um, you know, Isabel is definitely a candidate for that and would be a great loving companion in your home. Hi, how are you? Oh, and just small enough to, to sit on your lap. Just about. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, and great, like you said, great markings. And if you are 60, you know that that uh, circle around the eye reminds you of Petey from the Little Rascals. Absolutely. Rascal, the dog okay, I think we just ran out of time. So <laughs> you can get her at the Animal Defense League, 11300 Nakadoshi. you got to get down to She gives kisses, too. Time. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. They're in Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, or give them a call at 655-1481. Isabel, you ready to get down? Squirrel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, dear. I said it before, I'll say it again. That dog is too big for anyone's lap. No. <laughs>
He's still, still adorable, he's though. He's still cute, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, regardless of which political party you're affiliated with, most people agree that this impeachment process, serious business. But there are some lighter moments that happen every so often during the process. CNN's Jeannie Mose has more on impeachment follies. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Yada, yada, yada. Here are some of the things people were yadaing about this week. But everyone was pretty disturbed by the sight of Senator Chuck Grassley in his pajamas. <laughs> that was a joke, but the sketches of Senator Jim Risch with his eyes closed weren't. Because you know you've been sleeping for a long time when an artist has time to sketch your portrait. He could have used an Apple Watch. He wakes you up. At least seven senators responded Tuesday wearing Apple watches. Gave them a link to the outside world. And text your friends. When senators had to abandon their phones in specially built cubby holes. Rand Paul played a crossword puzzle. Trump toady, eight letters. Uh, oh, Rand Paul, there you go. A couple of senators had fidget spinners and talk about high crimes. I've seen a lot of sneaking of, of candy. The stash is located at Senator Pat Toomey's desk back near an entrance. These days, the candy desk is filled with Hershey chocolates and Milky Ways, technically a violation of the no food rule, and the only drinks, water and milk. Also known as a Mike Pence martini. <laughs> Most senators these days have never heard of the dairy loophole. Back in 1966, Senator Everett Dirksen asked for a glass of milk, spurning his usual water. I thank the chair because water becomes pretty thin after a period of time. My lunch today will be a tall glass of milk. And thus, the U.S. Senate became lactose tolerant. Several senators, including Elizabeth Warren, were spotted enjoying glasses of milk. The late nights milked it. These days on the Senate floor, the answer to... Got milk. ...is yes. Is it me, or does the Capitol Dome resemble an upside-down utter? Genie Mose, CNN, New York. So my question <laughs> is, what if you are lactose intolerant? Can you get almond milk? What about soy milk? Oh my goodness, I don't know if you can All make the different special variations. Requests. I'm sure they make special requests. I would just be time. livid because we work like eight hour days depending on the day. Right, right. I need coffee. And if you're sitting there for 12 hours at a time, oh my goodness. the only substance you could drink other than water is milk. I don't know how you do it. That's, I don't know. It'd be like fueling up before before a run or a race or something. They have to drink all their caffeine before. You know. That's true. <laughs> Strategy, I like good it. Luck, good luck, yeah. 655, 58 degrees out. And now let's take a look at some birthdays. Here's Kayla turning nine years old. Or Kaylee, yeah, Kaylee. Happy birthday, Kaylee, nine years old. And next up, we have Lane, three years old. Happy birthday, Lane. Love the name Lane. Lane Johnson, Eagles player. Happy <laughs> birthday, Lane. Remember to keep sending those birthday pictures into ksat.com slash birthdays, including name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on Good Morning San Antonio. San Antonio police want to find four male suspects wanted in a deadly home invasion on the west side. Now, one of four other people in the house was shot in the leg. He was rushed to Bamsey, but he bled to death. It's believed he was possibly in his mid-30s. Police want to know if the people inside the house may have known the suspects or what may have led up to the home invasion. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Well, we've cooled down a couple more degrees, but it's still a mild morning. It's 57 at the airport, 48 up at Bernie Stage Airfield, 55 in Hondo and 54 in Stinson. At Stinson, we are seeing skies clear at the moment, and so you know what that means. We're going to warm up. We'll already be at 70 by noon, 78 for the high temperature this afternoon. It's interesting to talk about the end of January with a high near 80 degrees. Northeast breeze at about 5 miles per hour. We do have a chance for rain on Tuesday morning and then again on Thursday and this will be the warmest day of the week. Temperatures will trend down into the 50s for highs. I don't mind it, but it makes me scared for next month. Oh, <laughs> what to expect. Yeah, we'll see. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. We are taking an hour long break for Good Morning America. When we come back, we have a lot to talk about. Leading essay, I sit down with Jania Andrew Sullivan, and we talk about District 2 and the East Side. And also, our case at Community Blood Drive kicks off tomorrow. We'll talk more about that. See you in an hour, guys. Bye, guys. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now.
Right now on GMSA, police investigating a mysterious death. A woman found dead next to a vehicle on the west side. Jesse Degliato joins us live with the details. And a man shot and killed after someone attempted to rob his house. Police now looking for those four suspects. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a gorgeous start to your Sunday morning. 55 degrees right now. We started at 60 and we are only going to get warmer out there. Sarah Spivey joins us with your full forecast. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. It's Sunday, January 26th. And that was a beautiful shot of the sun. Things that we're going to expect today. Gorgeous to day. <laughs> 55 now. Sarah, you're saying we could expect close to 80? Yeah, by the afternoon, we'll be in the upper 70s. Now, we did have areas of morning fog and drizzle, but those are long gone, and we're seeing tons of sunshine. We, we're at about 60 degrees about an hour or so ago, but temperatures have cooled down a little bit. We're now at 55, and the reason for that is we've had slightly drier air moving in, able to cool us down just slightly as the sun has risen. By the way, sunrise is actually the coolest part of the day, uh, usually, typically, unless we get a cold front or something like that. And then after uh, we see these skies completely clear out, we are just going to warm up very quickly. Near 80 degrees for the afternoon high, 78. Northeast breeze about five miles per hour, and then tonight will cool down pretty quickly as well. Now, it's been a while since we've had uh, complete sunshine uh, for couple of days and we're going to have that uh, throughout the next couple of days. But I would caution you that if you're wanting to wash your vehicle, I would give it the yellow light because there is a small chance uh, for rain, especially on Tuesday. And I'd hate for you to not get enough use out of that clean car before you have to deal with the rain on the roads. And so I'll be back in just a bit to talk about that chance for rain. Until then, back to you, Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories we've been following this morning. A woman is found dead on the ground next to a vehicle. Its driver passed out on the front seat. Jesse DeGoyado live at Public Safety Headquarters. So, Jesse, what else are police saying about this case? Well, San Antonio police say that all this unfolded after a vehicle hit a pole outside a tire shop on Culebra. Now, witnesses told police that they didn't see the crash, but they certainly saw the woman laying outside the vehicle. Police say the driver had passed out on the front seat. They believe both the man and woman may have been highly intoxicated. The woman, they say, looked as if she'd been dragged on the ground. They say she showed signs of road rash. And certainly police want to learn more about the circumstances of what they found outside that tire shop. And so far, they have not yet released the names of the man and woman involved. We're live outside Public Safety Headquarters. Jesse De Goyedo, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. A man is dead this morning after being shot in the leg in his own home by four suspects attempting to rob him. Now, it happened just before midnight in the 100 block of Hidalgo Street on the city's west side. Now, according to police, four suspects broke into that home and asked the man inside for money. Now, when the man said he didn't have money, one of those suspects shot him in the leg. They all left the scene taking nothing with them. The man was taken to a hospital where he later died. Now, police say the bullet struck a main artery. Now, three other people were inside the home at the time of that invasion. They are being questioned by police. And a woman in critical condition after police say a truck crashed into a pole just south of downtown. All of this happening just after midnight at the intersection of Gunther Street and Eagle Land Drive. Police say the crash was so intense, the woman, a passenger in the truck, went through the windshield. The driver of the truck was taken to a nearby hospital with minor injuries. Police say that driver under the influence right now facing intoxication assault charges. That could be increased to intoxication manslaughter if the woman dies. And District 2 of San Antonio is one of the most culturally diverse areas of the city. Now, the district includes San Antonio's east side, which sometimes has the stigma of crime and violence. But the newly elected councilwoman of District 2 hopes to flip the narrative. In this week's leading essay, I sit down with Jada Andrew Sullivan. She tells me she plans to bring new economic development, beautification, and a sense of realism to the district she was raised in and the district she now represents. My one specific goal is to bring unity to our community. 
and that starts by me getting out to all of the ones that said you're not supposed to be here and help them understand that we're here not only for a specific few but we're here for everyone. Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan grew up on the east side. She tells me it's a problem when neighbors there look around they see continued development in other parts of the city but not theirs. We get a lot of the bad stigma we get a lot of the bad press but truly we have the richest culture we have the greatest people we have gifts that have not been tapped into. Andrew Sullivan has big plans for her hometown. She knows she has a lot of work to do and less than a year in, she's not wasting any time. But not just in the method of how we speak about it, but definitely how we put our boots on the ground, get to work, um, put our hands on the ground, pick up the trash in our community, which brings about a sense of understanding that we're not just here to be in the seat, we're here to truly do the work. One of the main priorities, bring business and bring money to the area. But once we start looking at those economic development aspects and not just the big corporations that can bring in the multi-million but truly look at how do we change a life one life at a time. That's when we start making an impact on economic development. Andrew Sullivan says the east side has way too much to offer for companies not to move there. We need more tech savvy companies coming in. We have the microbiology coming in and so that is amazing. Let's get our kids into health conscious understanding of what it means to go into this health field. And as a local leader, she aims to make District 2 a safer place and Andrew Sullivan and a veteran knows you can't just police the problems away. And so we reach out to our faith base. We reach out to our civic leaders. We reach out to our economic leaders. We reach out to our school districts. It takes all of us. We need to get back to the rhetoric of it really does take a village. Gun violence is a big problem on the east side. There was an idea of a gun buyback program, but the program has evolved. It's now intended to be much more expansive. We're looking more to change the rhetoric of no longer just gun buyback, but how can each one step up and do their part to say, if you see it, say something. If you know something is going on, do something. But then I have this in my possession, let me lock it up. There are also issues of infrastructure, education, and transportation that the city councilwoman has plans to address. And she already knows this won't happen overnight. These solutions to the issues are not going to be simple. It's more of a holistic approach for District 2. It's not just a one-off, fits all. Now, that was just a small fraction of the large range of topics that the councilwoman and I discussed. And right now on our KSET streaming app and KSET.com, you will be able to watch the entire interview, including links to previous stories we have done on topics that we touched on. And yeah, this is pretty cool. I was telling you earlier that I like the fact that she grew up mm -hmm. in District 2. And so, you know, obviously very familiar with, with all the issues. And I also liked how she was talking about she wants the community to also step up when it comes to safety. Right. And the way she said it when we were talking earlier, she said, um, you know, we can't just police the problems away. Right. You know, she really wants to go back to that narrative of it takes a village. Everyone needs to come together and improve. And there are a lot of plans in place. We talked about some programs that are going to be put into the east side and District 2. Really hedge on that economic development and bringing more business. Because like she said, there's so much to offer there for more places and more companies not to go. And very exciting for District 2. But also, as she mentioned, it's not going to happen overnight. Good right. point. <laughs> and uh, this is just one of the series for leading essay. Next up, we have Roberto Trevino. District Can 1. District 1. I think it's your district. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I know. <laughs> and so you and yes. everyone watching, if you have any questions, we love viewer submitted questions. And you can go to ksat.com right now and submit your question. I can ask them when we meet, I think, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Yeah, I think my husband has some questions. Perfect. We'll let you know. Excited. <laughs> and just a reminder, our KSET Community Blood Drive kicks off tomorrow. That is January 27th. All right, we are teaming up with University Health System to help replenish the city's blood supply. Now, the blood drive going on until Friday, January 31st, but you don't have to wait until then. As National Blood Donor Month comes to an end, keep in mind University Health System is always accepting blood donations. Now, you can schedule an appointment at DonateBloodToday.com, and you can find all this information that's on our website at KSET.com. And I know you're one of the biggest proponents for donating blood. You do it all the time. I do. I, I need, I'm going to go back this week. I'm trying to decide a time because I, I actually want to take my daughter again. Mm. Uh, I took her. Uh, she was about three years old. I want her to not be afraid and also know, you know, that this is going to help somebody else. Right. So I'm kind of like trying to see when she's not in school and I'll take her out there. Smart. Starting them young. Yeah. <laughs> 809, 55 degrees out.
And today is not Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. So don't worry if you didn't buy the present. But it is definitely the perfect day to celebrate your spouses. Ah, there's Wyvie, can you hear me? <laughs> That's coming up next. And are you ready for the biggest football game of the year? Still ahead on GMSA, a preview of what's to come next Sunday. So we're not talking about the Pro Bowl? Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Lego fans, listen up. You might want to head to Legoland this week. A discount you're not going to want to miss. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. A beautiful Sunday morning. Sarah Spivey's joining us in just a little bit. She tells us it is only going to get better. It does not feel like winter. We're going to tell you more after the break. And welcome back. It is 8.13, almost 8.14. Okay, 8.14 now. <laughs> Lego fans, listen to this. You might want to visit Legoland Discover Center next week. Starting tomorrow, San Antonio residents are getting 50% off admission to the ultimate indoor Lego playground located inside the shops at River Center Mall. Have you been? Not yet. It's really we cool. We need to go. Yeah. We went and they actually have a full diagram to scale of the entire city of San Antonio. I, I've seen video of that. I, I know it looks pretty cool. We need to get out there. It is really cool. So the reason is Legoland celebrating Locals Appreciation Week and they want to make sure all Lego fans take advantage of this discount. But all adults that enter the playground must have a child with them and show proof <laughs> of residency. So this offer is ending on Sunday, February 2nd. For more information, just visit our website at kset.com. So that means, Max, you can't go there without Rooney. I'm going to join your family <laughs> of course, just for the day. Of course, of course. All right, well, if you ran out of ideas on how to celebrate Valentine's Day, it might be a unique one that you might want to consider. So this year you can have dinner among animals at the San Antonio Zoo. <laughs> How romantic, like, like Lady and the Tramp, you know, the two dogs aww, with the spaghetti. Okay. Sure. The zoo is hosting its <laughs> Wild at Heart event that includes a four-course meal, a glass of wine, and, of course, a front-row seat to the Africa Live exhibit. Mm. So there are two different ti times available, one at 5.30 p.m. and the other at 7.30 p.m., all this on Valentine's Day, which people falls on Friday this year. Woo! -hoo! For Except more for details. Except people have to work early Saturday morning. Well, Not too much woohoo. That's true. <laughs> we, we can we can tough it out. For more details, visit our website at kset.com. They had me with the four course meal. Yeah. Well, it might be sold a little bit. Okay. Well, Interested. Maybe, there's a 5:30 one. I know. I see it. Just eat fast. There you go. <laughs> All right. Ed talking about love. Guess what national day it is today? Dun, dun, dun. It is National Spouses Day. Yeah. So we can celebrate. Yay! <laughs> so if you need an excuse for date night, there you have it. Marriage isn't always easy though, and sometimes the bond between spouses gets lost in the hustle and bustle of day-to-day -day life. So make sure to take the time today to appreciate the person who's there through the good times and the bad times. Not about the gifts, but it is about spending time together. That's cool. Let's uh, let's turn You're, it to our newlywed. I know, that's what I was oh, looking yeah. off I mean, screen. we're still in our newlywed. Yes, but you <laughs> already get to still. celebrate your spouse. That's yeah. All, that's awesome. It's true. National Spouses Day. Mm. Oh, so oh, we got some fun facts. <laughs> Here, Shout I'll, out to I'll new okay. producer we'll Gabby, bringing all the goods today. Ten reasons Americans appreciate their spouse. We're not going to go through all ten, <laughs> but any ones that jump out to you? Um, I like um, my spouse is a hard worker. Mm. That's 60% yeah. of people. I agree with that. 56% uh, says I can be myself around That's my important. Ooh, which is yes. important. I'm Great surprised parent. it's only 56%. <laughs> it's a little worrisome. Yeah. That means 44 didn't. Agree with that. And it's funny, um, I, I like this one. I know it's all the way to number nine, but mm. my spouse does the dishes. 29%. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Luis. Yes. I'm sticking with number six, 45%. My spouse is a great parent. Oh, that's nice. good, too. Mm. Yeah, there's also some negative ones, Top too. annoying thing? Yes. Ooh. My spouse has selective listening. That is also my husband, Luis, <laughs> who has tuned me out over the years. He can't hear me talking right now. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Well, happy it National Spouses yes. Day, yes. Yes. Spouses everybody. And All a right. great day to appreciate it outside. Yes, you that's know, true. it's going to be beautiful this afternoon. It'll be nice and warm and sunny. Uh, and we will be able to see a high temperature close to 80 degrees this afternoon. So It's winter, and right? It's January. Yeah, it's <laughs> in January. It that's is. Cool. But it is going to be a little bit on the warmer side. We did start off with areas of fog and drizzle, but things have uh, really uh, started to improve out there. And now it is sunny. Now, as far as the fog and drizzle go, that, that means that mold is typically up a little bit, and we just got the pollen count in today. Mold is high, so if you're wheezing and sneezing, 
that mold is the reason. Mountain cedar is moderate. It could be a lot worse. We're still in the middle of mountain cedar season, uh, but it, it is moderate at 390 and ash is present, but in low amounts. Let's take a look at the live cam right now. Beautiful sunshine. Now earlier this morning we had widespread dense fog in some places and taking a look at visibility right now. There's still a couple of spots where there are some areas of fog. Bernie Stage Airfield right on the Kendall Bear County line experiencing uh, five mile visibility. Look down at Stinson. A little bit of dense fog down at Stinson at the moment. And so there are still pockets of fog out there. So because of that, there's a dense fog advisory in place until nine, just for the next 40 minutes or so. Most of us, however, complete sunshine. It's 46 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 54 at Bulverde, 55 at SA International, uh, and 56 in New Braunfels, generally waking up in the 50s around San Antonio, and that's quite a bit up from yesterday. Yesterday we were waking up in the 40s. Take a look at the satellite imagery as we zoom in. Those skies are just clearing from north to south, and soon here we're going to have a completely sunny day for everybody around the KSAT 12 viewing area, and as we head into the afternoon, that sun is going to really be able to warm us up. We'll have drier air in place, and so I'd expect an afternoon high right around 78 around downtown San Antonio. Elsewhere, the high temperatures will be in the mid to upper 70s, so it's going to be a warm day. We usually see a high temperature right around 63, 64 this time of year, so we will be well above that by 10 to 15 degrees. Clearing skies at the moment, warming up already at 70 by noon, 78 for the high, and then we'll cool down pretty quickly tonight, too. Temperatures will fall into the 50s this evening under clear skies uh, and uh, calm wind conditions. And so tomorrow morning we should have some areas of patchy fog. Uh, but other than that, it'll be nice and sunny on Monday as well. All the rain that we desperately need is well to the east of San Antonio near New Orleans and the Mississippi River Valley. But our next system is going to be bringing us a chance for rain on Tuesday morning. Right now it's over the Pacific Northwest cold front and a low pressure system. And as we go forward in time, what you'll notice is that that rain chance is going to be best on Tuesday morning. Uh, we'll have a, areas of scattered rain overnight Monday into Tuesday, but for Monday itself, it should be nice and sunny. Then that front arrives on Tuesday morning, right around the morning commute. We'll have areas of scattered light rain. It'll push on through and it'll be nice and sunny on Wednesday as well. Unfortunately, we have a we have to say goodbye to the sunshine temporarily, but we desperately need the rain. So on Thursday, there's going to be another chance for rain. And notice that temperatures go from the upper 70s today to struggling to get out of the 50s on Thursday. So we'll have a gradual cool down with high temperatures, more seasonably average by the end of the week and by the end of January. That's okay. I don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't I mind. Like almost cooling. silver lining. Always a silver well, lining. And you got to remember, in August the average high temperature is 96. Yes. So, so we will enjoy the mild temps. Yes, we will. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 821, 55 degrees out. Next, we are going to be talking about the big game, the Pro Bowl today, but the bigger game, the Super Bowl next Sunday. That's right. And there are three cases of the coronavirus already confirmed here in the United States. When an American company is doing to help prevent it from spreading. Good morning and welcome back. 824 this Sunday morning and it is Pro Bowl Sunday. Six Cowboys set to take part in the fun All-Star Game, but let's be honest. As big of an honor as it is, all of these guys would rather be playing next Sunday, Super Bowl 54. We are now just one week, nine hours, and about nine minutes to Super Bowl kickoff down in Miami. In case you didn't know, it is San Francisco 49ers led by a stringent defense, top-tier run game, Jimmy Garoppolo at the helmet quarterback, taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, that prolific offense, and of course, reigning MVP Patrick Mahomes. Right now, the Chiefs, a two-point favorite in the big game. Teams have been prepping at their respective practice facilities, but today they load up the plans and they head to the spot of the game, Miami. Time to talk the Spurs, silver and black, sitting at 20 and 24, the ninth seed in the West, half game behind the Grizz for that playoff spot, but they have a chance to get that eighth seed today. Spurs hosting the Toronto Raptors this afternoon here at home, AT&T Center, 3 p.m. So how are we feeling, Steph? Go Spurs, go. I think Always. we're good. Yeah. Feel, feeling confident? Yeah, Sunday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's mm -hmm. a great, here at home. great time to win. All right, love yeah. it. Yeah. 826, 55 degrees out and a World War II veteran asking for a simple wish for Valentine's Day. Historia ahead on GMSA.
And we have some birthdays today. We have Monica and Nancy, who are sisters. Monica, 46, and 64. Uh, Nancy turning 64 years old today. Happy birthday, guys. Now remember, keep posting your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's a little warmer this morning than awesome. it was yesterday. So not too bad, but um, Sarah's saying it's going to hit close to 80. That's pretty well, I, I was say, love I was San Antonio say, winters. I was going to say, it's pretty much like San Antonio, though. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll be just shy of 80 degrees this afternoon. I think high temperatures will be in the upper 70s for the majority of us by about 4 p.m. That's usually when we see a high temperature this time of year. But overnight, we had quite a bit of uh, drizzle and fog. In fact, at the airport, about four hundredths of an inch of precipitation was recorded. And, you know, mist, fog, drizzle, that is a great atmosphere for mold to grow. And so in today's pollen count, mold is high, unfortunately, at 9,360 mold spores per cubic meter of air. Mountain cedar, which has been causing a lot of problems as we're nearing the end of mountain cedar season, you can see that it's starting to drop. It's still moderate, though, so that could still cause some issues. Ash is present, but really minuscule, only low. Now, uh, in the uh, forecast, we're going to be seeing those temperatures rise pretty quickly here. We've been able to see skies clear. It's been a beautiful morning, but we do have a chance for rain right around the corner as well that I want to talk about. So busy forecast. I'll be back to tell you about the forecast uh, and what you can expect as we head into an interesting weather week. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to a top story we've been following this morning. San Antonio police trying to sort out what happened outside a tire shop where a woman was found dead next to a vehicle that had appeared to have crashed into a pole. Our Jesse Degollado is live at Public Safety Headquarters. Now, Jesse was the woman, the driver of that vehicle. Well, actually, the driver was a male who police say they found passed out on the front seat. But they also say they believe that both the men and woman had been highly intoxicated. The vehicle that they were in, as you say, had hit a pole in front of a tire shop. And witnesses told police that they didn't see the crash, but they certainly saw the woman next to the vehicle. Police say she'd suffered some road rash, and it appeared she'd been dragged out of the vehicle. Now we're awaiting more information about what may have happened outside the tire shop, along with the identities of the man and woman. We're live outside Public Safety Headquarters, Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. In your morning headlines, the number of deaths is now up to 35 after an earthquake hit eastern Turkey on Friday. At least 10 buildings collapsed, according to the Turkish interior minister, and it is believed that people may still be trapped. Turkish rescue teams have been working against the clock and under freezing temperatures to pull more survivors from collapsed buildings. Turkish officials say more than 1,000 people were injured and more than 600 aftershocks have rocked the region. And there are now three cases of the coronavirus confirmed here in the United States. Now, a company in Massachusetts is working to develop a vaccine to prevent the virus. Biotech company Moderna and the National Institute of Health are using mRNA technology, which instructs cells in the body to make proteins to prevent or fight disease. The first step is to figure out the right vaccine, then later prove it can work in humans during a clinical trial. Now over 50 people in China have died from coronavirus. And some good news for Boeing. The newest plane, the 777X, took its inaugural flight. Now this comes after windy weather had postponed the maiden flight since Thursday. The new 777X has composite fiber wings, replacing the traditional aluminum ones. The wings are the largest Boeing has ever built at 114 feet long and 23 feet wide. The 777X also has a new engine, all new systems, as well as an all new design for the interior. The company says it has already received 320 orders for the brand new plane. And we have a look at some of the top stories making headlines this week. After taking a day break today, the Senate impeachment trial of President Donald Trump continues tomorrow, Monday. After starting on Saturday, the president's defense team now has two days left to finish the remainder of their time to present their opening statements. After having up to 16 hours for senators to submit written questions, a vote on whether to subpoena new witnesses and documents will likely follow. 
And President Donald Trump has two Keep America Great events planned this week. On Tuesday, he will be in Wildwood, New Jersey, making the first time the president will hold a rally in the Garden State since being elected. Then on Thursday, he will attend a rally in Iowa just four days before the Democratic Iowa caucuses. And more than three and a half years after the British public voted to leave the European Union, Prime Minister Boris Johnson signing the withdrawal agreement, paving the way for Brexit on Friday. The January 31st deadline was set after several years of talks, two prime minister changes and three deadline extensions. And the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences will be hosting this year's nominees at the annual Oscar luncheon. And after being held at the Beverly Hilton for nearly four decades, this year the event will have a change of venue. On Monday, the nominees will meet, mingle and pose for this year's class photo in the Ray Dolby Ballroom. The Oscars will air right here on KSET 12 on Sunday, February 9th. For some people, it's that's their Super Bowl. There you go. That makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. 836, 55 degrees out. And a Valentine's Day to remember for a World War II veteran. Find out how the world helped to make a hero's wish come true. And if you're looking to start a family, how long can you afford to stay off the job? Coming up, more on a renewed push for federal policies that would pay workers during their time off. Well, if you are looking for a little bit older dog who is, boy, full of energy and life and vim and vigor and everything else, you're going to meet this girl coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. So Max said this dog was too big for that person's lap. Too I, big for I, any lap. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. Anyway, taking a look outside with live cam, beautiful shot out there. The sun is out. Yay. We're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect for the rest of your day. We'll be right back. Wendy's here from the Animal Defense League, and if you're looking for a dog that's going to give you a run for your money as far as <laughs> energy and just love and life, this one. And she's a love, too. I mean, she's very affectionate. This is Miss Isabel. She's eight years old, if you can believe it, and obviously in great health. Um, she is potty trained. She loves to ride in the car. And you know, uh, Mike, we have our special Senior for Seniors program where uh, any dog or cat over the age of seven um, can be adopted by someone over the age of 60 with all of our fees waived. So, um, you know, Isabel is definitely a candidate for that and would be a great loving companion in your home. You, hi, how are you? Oh, look and at that. Just small enough to, to sit on your lap. Just about. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, and great, like you said, great markings. And if you are 60, you know that that uh, circle around the eye reminds you of Petey from the Little Rascals. Absolutely. Rascal, the okay, I think we just ran out of time. So <laughs> you can get her at the Animal Defense League, 11300 Nakadoshi. She's got to get down the road. She gives kisses, run, too. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank <laughs> you. Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, or give him a call at 655-1481. Isabel, you ready to get down? Squirrel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, dear. She's comfortable right there. Adorable. Yeah. But here's the thing, not a lap dog. <laughs> yes, clearly. <laughs> I guess technically yeah. you can make any dog a lap dog though. Yes, she's fine. Very cute. Yes, we're good. <laughs> so a recent survey showed 70% of women who left the workforce did so because they needed flexibility, like time to care for a new baby, adopted child, or a sick family member. Congress has attempted in the past to pass federal paid leave and President Donald Trump announcing he will soon sign into law 12 weeks of paid leave for federal employees. But as our Erica Hernandez reports, the issue still remains for everyone else. Ashley McLay is packing up and moving out. She and her husband need more room for their expanding family. When little Michael arrives, Ashley will take two weeks of vacation offered by her employer, followed by six weeks of unpaid leave under the Family Leave and Medical Act. In fact, one in four women go back to work within two weeks because they cannot afford to lose the pay or their job. Ashley admits it could get tight in those weeks without their paycheck. I'm currently paying student loans and we have a mortgage. Inez Stepman is with the Independent Women's Forum. They surveyed 2,000 Americans and found 73% wanted the government to take action on a federal paid leave plan, but one that doesn't hit taxpayers hard in the wallet. Americans are, are concerned that this kind of program be fair to everyone. A proposed earned leave policy would allow workers to tap into their social security benefits early while they are on leave and then extend the age at which they would be eligible for their benefits at retirement. 
The proposal uses the Social Security disability formulas already in place and is dependent on a person's current income. For somebody who's making about $30,000, this is somewhere between $900 and $1,000 a month. Parents could receive up to $1,800 a month and the program would be capped at $5,000. That helps to pay the mortgage, it helps to pay the grocery bills, it helps to keep the electric on. Stemman says the earned leave proposal has broad bipartisan support and politicians have shown willingness to address the issue. The U.S. is the only industrialized country that does not federally mandate paid parental leave. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. All right, so yesterday you had the Weather yes. 101 question. Yeah. It's a yeah. quiz I frequently get wrong here on GMSA. Uh -huh. And the question was the average temperature <laughs> for the temperature. month of January. Yeah, right, it was B. Average high. It was B. It was 63 degrees, mm -hmm. and you got it right. Yes. You we're were already at 55. I guess 58. Right, I 58. So you were close for, for today. Well, for right now. But this is for not right going to be the high for yeah. today. No, true, it is true. not going to be the high for today. In fact, we're going to be in the mid to upper 70s this afternoon, <sighs> which, you know, is comfortable. Yeah. I love it. That's open the windows mm -hmm. and turn off Go the air conditioning. Go for a walk. Yeah, yeah and um, it's going to be beautiful. I mean, even just looking at the live shot outside right now, absolutely gorgeous with the sunshine. Yeah, that is uh, nice. Yeah, and this is a nice improvement because even when I was coming to work this morning, at about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, there was areas of drizzle and mist out there. And so big improvement just in the last couple of hours. We've got slightly drier air moving in. The skies have been able to clear and temperatures are a little on the cool side right now. It's 55 degrees, but that's not as cold as it was yesterday when we started off in the mid 40s. Uh, tons of sunshine out there. Visibility is at a perfect 10. Earlier this morning, that fog was around it. We still have a couple of areas where patchy fog is around. But taking a look at the radar and satellite, you can see those skies clearing around San Antonio. Honestly, really in the state of Texas, the only rain to speak of is east of Galveston. There were some thunderstorms in the Galveston, Houston area. But here in San Antonio, we're seeing those skies really start to clear. Uh, and again, a beautiful day. Visibility has totally improved for everybody. Uh, and although there could be a couple of areas of patchy fog out there still, we're looking at complete sunshine. And we're warming up too. 60 in Gonzales, 61 in Carrizo Springs, 61 in Catula, it's 54 in Del Rio and 52 in Rock Springs. In the high res future cast, nothing but sunshine. If we're going to see tons of blue skies out there and that's gonna allow temperatures to warm up. By 10, we'll be in the low to mid 60s. By noon, we'll be at 70 degrees with clearing skies. And then in the afternoon, total sunshine, 78 for the high around San Antonio. And then we cool down pretty quickly too, about a 20 degree drop over five hours from four to nine. So it's gonna be a cooler evening, uh, but that high temperature of 78 today is definitely gonna be the warmest day in the next seven day period. Notice how our high temperatures really start to go down. We get a cold front on Tuesday morning, and then that cooler air is just gonna work its way in. Part of the reason why we're only going to be in the 50s on Thursday is because we'll have a shot at some scattered rain. But what about Tuesday when that front moves through? There is the potential for some rain then. That front right now is over the Pacific Northwest and it's going to spill the some cooler air, Pacific cooler air uh, across uh, the United States in the week ahead. But for now, both today and tomorrow, we'll have a good amount of sunshine in the forecast. Tuesday morning, that front will arrive. It'll allow for a broken line of showers. So we're really only going about 40% for rain chances. It's not going to amount to too much, but the possibility is there and it could make for a slightly messy morning commute on Tuesday. Then on Tuesday, we'll clear out in the afternoon, and on Wednesday, we'll have tons of sunshine as well. Notice that those temperatures are gonna go down. We'll have an areas of rain on both Thursday and Friday with more cloud cover in store, but at least we clear out for the weekend, Super Bowl weekend, and also a lot of us are gonna be out at the KSAT Corral mm -hmm. on Saturday. Should I heard there's a rumor nice? we may or may not have baby goats. Yes, but not doing yoga. We're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that stipulation, Stephanie. I just don't want to, you know, get people. For those up. who don't know, there's a craze of baby goats and yoga yeah. going around. We're not falling into the craze, no. though. But we do love baby goats, and yes, they will be at the KSAT Corral. Yeah, just not doing yoga. Yeah. And if you want to sign up, you can do so right now, KSAT.com. Yeah, just check out our website. We'll all be there. Thank you, Sarah.
We'll see you there. 848, 55 degrees now. And he's got a purple heart. Now he just wants Valentine's hearts. What a World War II veteran is asking for on Valentine's Day. That's next. And before we take a break, let's take a look at Aww. those birthdays this morning. Chloe, five years old. Happy birthday, Chloe. Happy birthday, Chloe. Everyone should be that Aww, happy. Cute. Another cute picture. Happy birthday, Fernando. Fernando also turning five. Happy birthday. Now keep posting your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. A woman is found dead laying next to a vehicle that had crashed into a pole. The driver was passed out in the front seat. The vehicle and the woman were discovered outside a tire shop on Culebra. They say the woman had suffered some road rash. They also say it appeared as if she'd been dragged out of the vehicle. The names of those involved have yet to be released. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. In the news you need to know before you go, a man dead this morning after being shot in the leg in his own home by four suspects attempting to rob him. Now, all of this happened just before midnight in the 100 block of Hidalgo Street. That's on the west side. According to police, four suspects broke into the home, asked that man inside for money. When the man said he didn't have any money, one of the suspects shot the victim in the leg. They left the scene, taking nothing with them. That man was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police say the bullet actually struck a main artery in his leg. Three other people were inside the home at the time of the invasion, the time of the shooting. Right now, they're being questioned by police. And a woman is in critical condition after police say a truck crashed into a pole just south of downtown. Now, it happened just after midnight at the intersection of Gunther Street and Eagle Land Drive. Now, police say the crash was so intense, the woman who was a passenger in that truck went through the windshield. The driver of the truck was taken to a nearby hospital with minor injuries. Now, police say the driver of the pickup was under the influence and is now facing intoxication assault charges, which could be increased to intoxication manslaughter if that woman dies. And tomorrow on GMSA, exercising, very important for our health, but sometimes it can cause injuries. Find out what the most common mistakes are when we go to the gym and how to easily avoid them. Well, some people may be getting a lot of exercise by sneezing. You know? <laughs> oh, no. good, a good ab workout. Mold is high, unfortunately, past 9,000. Mountain Cedar is moderate at 390. Today's going to be a warm one. We're starting off the 50s, but we'll warm up into the mid to upper 70s this afternoon. And then on Tuesday morning, we have a shot at some rain. Sunshine on Wednesday, more rain possible on Thursday as well. And we will take any little bit of rain that we can get because we are in the middle of severe drought across parts of Southern Bear County and southeast of San Antonio. So here's fingers crossed for that rain on Tuesday morning and on Thursday. Until then, it's actually going to cool down quite a bit. Our highs will only be in the 60s by the end of the week. All right. Well, fingers crossed for the rain and we'll wait to wash our cars. Sounds good. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, a World War II veteran has a purple heart and now he wants other people to reach out their hearts. Well, for Valentine's Day, 104-year-old Major Bill White just asked for a few Valentine's Day cards, but the response was never what he expected. So Operation Valentine turned out to be a huge success for Major White. With still three weeks left to go until Valentine's Day, Major White has already received over 25,000 cards and gifts from people around the world thanking him for his service. Makes me feel good inside because he did what he did. He fought for the war for us, so I wanted to make him happy by donating a Valentine's Day card. Some letters were actually made from students here in the U.S., but are even coming from as far away as Brazil and Japan, which is pretty amazing. Wow. That's cool. I'm glad that all these students and people stepped up to his request. A nice it's looking picture there too. Amazing. No, it was really cool. And you know what? We first actually talked about this story a few weeks ago Aww. when he had come out and done like a video or a post on social media and said, you know, all he wanted was some letters and notes for people from Valentine's Day. We had posted about it and you know, people who have responded to us on social media, they have actually just said, Oh, that is so adorable, we're gonna do what we can, where's the address? Sent them the link and hopefully yeah. That actually helped out. From San Antonio, so thank you very much. Yeah. That is awesome. Love living in Military City, USA. Yes. 